Are we live? I think we are. All right, hello everybody and welcome to Healthy Holiday Eating with the Weight Management Team. We're gonna go around and introduce ourselves. My name is Stephanie Sisk and I am a nurse practitioner and a program manager of the Cotton O'Neill Weight Management Center. I'll let the rest of my team introduce themselves as well. Go ahead, ladies. I'm Carly Alderson. I am a family practice physician and board certified in obesity medicine. And I work at the clinic. I'm Veronica McPike. Oh. Go ahead, Jamie. Okay. okay. I'm Jamie Fowles. I'm one of the nurse practitioners with the weight management program as well. Veronica McPike, nurse practitioner with the weight management center. And I'm Amber Groling, a dietitian with the weight management center. All right. We are so excited that People are going to be jumping in and hopefully learning about healthy habits during the holiday season. This is a special holiday season because overall now we are in a quarantine again. So this has been a challenging year. 2020 has not been a normal year. Um, at Weight Management Center, we've seen a lot of the quarantine 15, which if you're not familiar with that, it's the 15 pounds that you gain with quarantine, which I think all of us can relate to. Um, just kind of the uncertainty with everything that's been going on in the world. And now we are in our holiday season, which is already challenging to stick to our healthy habits. So we're hopefully going to go through here with some healthy tips that are helpful to you. We have our three top tips that we're going to share with you. Um, and then at the very end, we're going to go over the most unhealthy food and the healthiest food to eat um, for the holidays. So we will share, with, share that with you. I have my, my handy jingle bells. When anyone makes a good tip, I'm gonna ring that jingle bell. Everybody is aware we're not gonna miss it. Right, ladies? All right. So starting out, first I wanna make a point that with the holiday season, studies actually show us that we gain approximately three pounds during the holiday season. And while that doesn't seem like a whole lot, studies also show us that you don't lose that weight during the rest of the year. So you can imagine over a couple years, three years, four years, five years, that can be kind of taxing on your body. So we're hoping here, just maintain, we're gonna give you some tips. So tip number one, tip number one is celebrate the holiday, not the holiday month, right? Who here is guilty of maybe doing a little bit of celebrating all month long for the month of November and December. Anybody else guilty of that? Yeah, I would say I'm guilty. Uh, dietitian confessions. Um, you know, there's all the extra parties. I mean, I think that'll be rained down a little bit this year for us just with the, you know, just trying to be safe and social distance. But I think this year we'll add that, you know, that stress eating and just, I, I'm a holiday baker. So um, I tend to eat a little bit more. But my tip for that is I try to work really hard during the day to allow myself like a treat um, or I work out extra to make up for some of my holiday, holiday month eating. I think it's hard because there's just so much more junk food around. And I, I don't know about anybody else, but I think around it starts getting colder out. I just want more mm. comfort food. It's a, it's a seasonal thing too, yeah. right? Like loves pumpkin spice lattes and like pumpkin muffins when all or of a eggnog like I know not everyone loves eggnog but I love eggnog they, silk makes a low calorie eggnog that somewhat tastes similar it's a lot less calories so that's another tip works good as a coffee creamer too ah I like that idea, like it. actually it's very well good. another yeah go ahead Carly I think it's really important to prep some healthy foods to just be ready. So fruits and vegetables, I think are your go-to, especially if you have kids in the house, you know, they're always grazing. And when they're home from school, they're just looking for, you know, something to eat. So I think a lot of times you eat a lot of calorie dense foods when you're holiday eating. And so you're actually not getting tons of portion. I mean, you know, it's a little tiny thing. So if you can fill up on fruits and vegetables, it will also help you to feel full, but also have some treats. Hey, Amber, how many servings of vegetables and fruits do you think everybody should be getting every day? We should be getting three cups of veggies and one to two cups of fruit every day. Woo, that's something to remember. Yay. Oh, especially <laughs> through the holiday season, right? Definitely. I love that tip. Cookies, 
you're going to be going to a party or a get together, which again, I know that's debatable if that's going to be happening, but um, you should still be doing three veggies and one to two fruits a day, right? And we should still be teaching that to our kids. Are there any vegetables that you guys try to limit or is everything free game? Limit based on taste preferences or for health reasons? Health. You know, starchy vegetables versus green veggies, or is everything all the same? I know I try to get, I know just in personal, right? Like I try to limit squash and corn mm -hmm. and some of those vegetables because they tend to be higher in carbohydrates, right? Yeah. And you know, and bread sorry to or, be there. I was just going to say no, one no. Ho holiday food that a lot of people tend to think is healthier is sweet potatoes. Um, and, and that's not that they're unhealthy, but they are higher in carbohydrates. So those should still be limited, especially if you're going to doctor them up with like brown sugar and marshmallows and all of that jazz. So, um, just keep in mind that sweet potatoes and potatoes are both a little bit starchier. The other thing to think about too, with veggies is especially during the holidays, like there's a lot of the cream corn or the green bean casserole and green beans are normally a good, a good portion of vegetables to have. But when you have all the casserole type stuff doctored up and like, like Amber was saying, doctoring up the sweet potatoes and stuff, just be careful of the added stuff that's in there because it's not necessarily just your veggies anymore. What if, so there was a question from somebody, what if you don't like vegetables, which we get this a lot at the clinic is, Sometimes people don't like vegetables, right? They didn't grow up eating them. They don't love them. Um, I wish we all loved them, but that's not the case, right? So what is a good alternative if you don't like vegetables? What do you guys usually recommend? Well, I think when you're looking at, you know, the lesser of two evils, I mean, fruit has kind of been vilified as having so many carbs and, you know, we'll have people come in the clinic saying, I can't eat fruit. So I go eat chips and salsa. And, you know, honestly, <laughs> eat the fruit because it's eating the fruit or eating, you know, the donut or, or whatever's it, you know, another appetizer. So, you know, you really have to look at those lesser of two evils sometimes. I agree. And it's and not, also, and fruit I, is not evil. I will put that out there too. Yeah. And I would say just to add, I completely agree. Food, fruit is not evil. And with nutrition, it always depends. It's always like, I always say it's compared to what? So if we're comparing fruit to chips, obviously fruit's the better choice. If we're comparing fruit to vegetables, vegetables are just a little lower in calorie. It doesn't mean that one's, you know, better than the other. It's just, you know, it's all about kind of balance and moderation, but um, for those that don't like vegetables, keep in mind, you know, you might try prepping them a different way. Roasting can be a really great way, especially this time of year. Um, it naturally caramelizes the vegetable and brings out their natural sugar content. So you might actually like um, them a little bit better, um, especially I like doing kind of a combination of, you know, like Brussels sprouts, which is one of those that just kind of gets a bad rep. I feel like it needs a name change, but um, they actually taste really good caramelized. They get kind of sweet and buttery and um, yeah, they're, they can be, they can be good. It's all in how you prepare it. So we can always send out some recipe tips too. Good. All right. So if you're just joining us, this is the weight management team from Cotton O'Neill and we are giving you our top three weight loss tips to get healthy for holidays. So we are ready for tip number two. Here we go. So tip number two is you really want to work on maintaining your weight through the holidays. I think so many times, I know all of you guys can relate where somebody comes in or even you yourself are saying, okay, I'm going to lose five pounds by January one, get a good head start. But once you get into the holiday season, you get into Thanksgiving, you notice that it's a lot more challenging. You thought you have a lot more foods around that you don't typically have um, that are hard to say no to. And then you just say, give up. I'll start January one right? So I know my big thing for myself, as well as recommendation to others, is step on the scale today and make sure January 1, you're at that same weight. Let's just work on maintaining. It doesn't have to be about losing. Let's still enjoy the holiday, but let's work on just being healthy throughout the holiday, right? Does anyone have one or two tips as far as just holiday season, or really just what is your number one weight loss tip? I think the important okay. thing to remember is the holiday is just that it is a day and you should enjoy that time and meal with your family, but try not to let it go on and on and on. Um, we can all find a reason to celebrate. And I think we all could find 
multiple reasons from here to March to keep that fun eating going, but just being um, more moderate and considering your choices. My biggest tip is to, I know, I know it's not the funnest thing to do, but my biggest tip is to stay consistent tracking all the way through the holidays because the holidays do offer up and, you know, it's easier to fall off track during the holidays. And especially when we have kind of one thing after another, after another, and it's easier to fall off track in that. And if you're tracking and keeping yourself more mindful of what you're doing um, and what you're eating and things, it, it can kind of be a motivator to, to stay consistent with your weight. Yeah, I think too, um, so many times we revolve the holidays around food, right? Like whenever you're getting together with your family, like, okay, what are we gonna have? To, what are we gonna have to snack on? What's our appetizer? What is breakfast? What is brunch? What are we having to drink? Uh, so I think another way to go about it too would be like, or what are we going to do, right? Like, let's just enjoy being together. I think food is still definitely a big part of it, but it doesn't need to be the center of everything. Let's like enjoy being with each other. If anything, this whole year, 2020 has taught us just to enjoy being together and not isolated, right? Like let's enjoy that time. We got movies to watch, do something fun together, right? Games to do, um, versus just getting really revolving around the kitchen, right? So we, in our family, I have two uh, 10 year olds and we tend to start doing questions. So I, I see this holiday as a lot of people who live in the same house getting together. So there's not gonna be as much conversation that you don't have on a daily basis. If you Google Thanksgiving family questions or something like that, it will um, bring up topics um, that will get your kids excited, get you excited, takes the focus off the food um, and really makes the meal an event. Um, you know, it, it, there's nothing worse than cooking for eight hours only to be done 15 minutes after you sit down. And if you can do something like that, it really extends that meal and kind of really makes people look forward to it. So just a, a thought. I like that idea. What about, we haven't really touched base yet on exercise. And I know it's, I know exercise is everyone's favorite thing to do, right? Like we love it. That's a joke, um, joke, <laughs> joke. But um, I think what's important though, is to look at all the gyms, right? A lot of people aren't going to gyms right now because they're not necessarily comfortable. Um, we know exercise plays a huge part in maintaining your weight, right? Like that regular activity on a daily basis helps the body just to filter through calories and maintain your weight, which is really important through the holidays. But so many times, right? Winter starts coming in the colder weather. And what do we do? We're like, okay, it's over. I'm going back inside until April. See you later. Um, so what, if anything, what are some tips for, what can we do for activity? Well, I, I will chime in here. Um, cause this is, I think what's most important for keeping my weight on track during this season. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, like I do try to offset my calorie intake with a calorie burn. And, um, I love, I personally use beach body. It's not an endorsement for beach body. I don't sell it. I don't have anything. Um, but I think anything online you can do YouTube has so many free resources. Um, you know, you don't have to purchase something. I just like the variety that beach body provides and the quality, but there's so much free online stuff and I get it. It is harder to motivate yourself, but I think you just build it into your routine. So for me, it's first thing in the morning. Cause if I don't do it first thing in the morning, it's just not going to happen, but that might not be what's best for you. So I think you just got to look at your day. You know, we all have, um, you know, 24 hours in a day and you know, only eight of those roughly is sleeping. So we have quite a few hours. If we just kind of piece it apart and look for the carving out, you know, starting with even, you know, 20 minutes building up to, you know, um, 30 to ideally even 60, which I know sounds crazy. So don't worry if you're at none, I think even just getting some movement in is better than none. And then, you know, the, the little things like parking further away when you do go to the store um, or do shopping or just getting up. If you sit most of the day, just getting up and taking those exercise breaks to, to move your body, it really can make a big difference. Research shows that if you're sitting for many hours um, at a time, that actually just getting up once an hour and taking like the 250 steps um, can really help just with your overall calorie burn and just mentally too be good good for the soul. I like too, if you're not much of an exerciser, like you don't wanna get in there and do videos or whatnot, um, just set a timer on your oven for like 20 minutes and go like hardcore clean your house or 
stand up while you're watching TV and just stand in place and, and march in place, right? It's anything that's going to get you moving that's out of the ordinary for you. So it doesn't have to set be like an exercise either. Or even go up and down the stairs in your house a couple times. That's a really good one too. Yeah, definitely. Right now I find that a lot of people are working remotely. So setting a timer in a different room to remind yourself to get up because we really get sucked into our work and we struggle to take breaks when we're working from home. Oh, I like that. So the phone goes off in the other room and you have to get up to go get it? You have to. It's a great idea. It's a great idea in the morning. Ring your bell. Ring your bell. bell. That's a good tip. Oh, I thought I was muted. I was like, what are you guys looking at me like that for? Stop. I'm not muted. Woo, that was a good tip. <laughs> it's also important. Uh, I keep coming back to the kids because I know they're coming home. And I think it's really important that they get some exercise for your sanity and for theirs. Um, so, you know, uh, what is the Wii Nintendo Dance Dance Revolution or whatever that's yeah. called? Um, you know, I also think we sit there and, and don't want to go outside when it's cold, but it's okay. I mean, jackets are made very warm anymore. And so if it's not icy and you're safe, you know, get out, get that fresh air. I think it's very reinvigorating. And um, so I, I, I have no problem getting out and walking. I did want to throw out there also, it's, it's not only good for weight loss exercise wise with all the quarantine and the COVID things and everybody kind of staying apart and staying away from each other stress and anxiety and, and mental health has just been kind of out of whack and people have just been dealing with a lot of stress and depression and, and just getting in a little bit of exercise every day can help with that too. So not only can it help with your weight loss, but it can help with mental health and emotional health and just feeling more energy and just feeling better in general. Yep. One thing I also want to touch base on is a lot of times around this time of year, I start seeing that people experience more cravings. Um, and uh, again, I, I think it's especially because we start eating sweets and there's food that's specific to this season. So, um, you know, as far as cravings go, I know one of the, the best tips that we really give at our clinic is it's all about protein, right? Especially in the morning. If you can start your morning off with a protein shake or eggs, something Greek yogurt, it can actually help with cravings later in the day, which is absolutely crucial. Um, especially if you're a late night. I know for most people, it's after dinner that you have those cravings. It's not necessarily all throughout the day. It's when we get home or relaxing, we start to have those cravings. Any other tips that any of you guys have to share for cravings later at night or during the season? Yeah, so um, I struggle with cravings. I'm a sweetaholic. Um, one of my favorite things this time of year is that the herbal teas start coming in holiday flavors. Um, like sugar plum and um, holiday spice and eggnog um, flavor, flavored herbal teas. And they actually taste really good. And I think it's just the act of like doing something like getting up and preparing the tea and it takes a little bit of time. So it kind of just helps, you know, you kind of get away from the craving of something like a little bit more high calorie, um, giving you something to do to drink. Plus it's hydrating you, which is really important. Um, as well, we're always preaching, you know, staying hydrated, drinking lots of water and herbal tea is naturally caffeine free. So it can be a great um, go to at night. Agreed. I think another, um, I'll jump in again on this. With quarantine, there's been a little bit more intake of cocktails. So I think another thing to think about would be um, getting a wine glass. I do this myself, putting carbonated water in a wine glass, right? And it's, it's essentially, you, it makes you feel like you're, you're drinking that wine, right? Does that make sense? Like it just makes you feel like you're doing something. It's that act of what you were talking about with the hot tea, right? And again, it, it's keeping you busy. It's an, a distraction instead of going and getting ice cream or sweets. Anybody else have tips for cravings? Got one more. My, my next one is drinking water, right? Especially if you have sweet cravings right? If you are not, I know if anybody tells me they're having sweet cravings, my, the first thing out of my mouth is how much water are you drinking? Because water gives us something to focus on. And especially our goal, what we typically give to patients is 80 ounces in a day. That's five water bottles, um, which to some people seems very easy. For other people, it's very challenging. But for one, I think it really helps with making, giving you energy. It helps with fullness, helps with cravings, helps to prevent overeating. So if you're not doing that already, then I recommend definitely drinking more water. 
All right. So again, if you're just joining us to our live event, this is the Weight Management Center from Cotton O'Neill. We are sharing our healthy tips for the holidays. We have three tips for you. For one, celebrate the holiday and not the hell of month. Tip number two, maintaining your weight throughout the holidays. Weigh yourself today. Make sure January 1 your weight on January 1. You maintain. You don't set an expectation to lose. Enjoy yourself, but maintain your weight. And now, for tip number three, find a balance. Everything in moderation, right? It's not about just eliminating all carbs. It's not about eliminating all desserts, right? We don't have to be all or nothing. And I feel like a lot of people struggle with the, the mentality that you either have to be completely on a diet or you have to be completely off it right? Does anybody else experience that or see that with our patients? I definitely um, experience that myself. Um, but also you have a lot of patients with, with, you know, struggles with that. My mother-in-law is a dietitian and diabetic educator, and she has some great advice. Um, her biggest one, and I was talking to her this morning, so thank you for your advice, but she um, tells patients, you know, what's that one thing that you love on a Thanksgiving meal? And that you want to have that you want to enjoy it. And then the things that you maybe don't love as much or feel like, Oh, someone took a lot of time preparing it. I need to eat it. Maybe take a spoonful, just be able to taste it, but, but don't, you know, overindulge in everything, pick that one thing or two things that's really important to you and enjoy that. And she said that she will have patients who, um, you know, will go all or nothing all throughout the holidays. And then come January, they feel like their holiday was ruined because they feel like all they did was focus on not eating those carbs, not indulging. And, and then a lot of times they'll um, relapse or, you know, have problems gain weight, gaining weight in January. Right. I think that's true. And again, it, it comes back to that maintaining during that month and not setting that expectation of, okay, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. So I'm just not going to eat anything. I mean, that's pretty miserable. Our goal here mm -hmm. is everything in moderation. We have to learn to incorporate these foods into our life. They come every year and we look forward to it. Right? It's not about saying that we shouldn't be eating those. We look forward to them. They bring us back to our childhood and all the good fuzzy memories, right? It's just all about moderation. So if we're having Amber, I'll, I'll pull on you for this, right? So if we're having cookies, for example, or pie, how much should we be having? How much should we have? Well, um, yeah. So interestingly enough, they've done research that after two bites of something, our taste buds become slightly desensitized and we've created a memory of eating the food. So I'm not saying that we should only eat two bites of a cookie or two bites of dessert, but by eating two bites of something, you have created that memory and your taste buds aren't, it won't taste as good as you continue to eat that. So I think really eating extremely slow and savoring it, but yeah, I would say for dessert, the smallest piece possible, um, I would go for a sliver. Um, and I love Carly's idea, like pick your favorite. Um, I grew up in a household where we would sometimes have 10 desserts and I'm not exaggerating. Um, so obviously, you know, if you had a taste of everything, like you're going to be way over consuming your calories. And so I think you got to pick, you know, what's the one or two things that you want to try and just have the smallest sliver of it, um, possible. I think that's key. And then just savor it really let it sit in your mouth and let it roll around and, and taste it and, and enjoy it. Don't, you know, like, again, I think, you know, devouring it and then completely avoiding it too. That can, like Carly said, you get through the holidays and you feel like you missed out and that's, that's not ideal either. So it has to be that balance and that moderation. I like the idea with the, um, the two bites, they actually mm -hmm. trigger your brain the most. You should just get two yeah. bites of everything, right? Maybe yeah. That, you can, Trick yourself Unless you have 10 less. desserts like my family serves, then don't do oh, two yeah, bites no. of everything. That gets a jingle. That was a good tip. <laughs> you know what? Another tip I think to think about is pick the slowest eater at the table. Mm -hmm. And my, um, most of my family meals, it was my grandfather and he took an hour to eat a piece of pie. You should eat with that person. You should totally view yourself eating with that person. You're half done by that time. The person's halfway done. I think that's a good way to keep you on tap. I love that tip. Slow eaters, right? Did you like that tip? I love that tip. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what about um, any other tips for as far as meals go? How do you make, you know, any desserts healthier? Does anybody try to do that? For me, it's more about moderation. I'm not much of a baker. I'll be completely honest. 
I'm more of a purchaser. I buy things. Yeah. But um, does anybody bake that has any tips? I bake a lot, but I mean, my biggest thing, I don't usually try to make it healthy, just portion control. But I will say if you're looking for a sugar substitute, if you really need to, to cut out the sugar, because um, it does lead to more cravings. And if you can't control the portions, um, Swerve is a great sweetener to use. It bakes just like sweetener. It's plant-based, so it's not artificial. Um, it works really well. A lot of the sugar alcohols like xylitol work really well too, but you just got to be careful if you have um, pets and then if you have digestive issues. So um, you can bake with like Splenda and Stevia. That's, those, are, those are great too, but I, I would find the most versatile sweetener to use for baking is, is Swerve. Okay, good to know. I think too, another thing is if you're a baker, like if you tend to bake cookies with your family, again, it's everything in moderation. If those are going to be sitting right on your counter, you're more likely oh, to just snack on them randomly and not in, like truly enjoy them like a novelty, like they are, right? They should be special. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be something random at your eating as you walk by the kitchen. Put them away, put in little containers, save them and say, okay, I get one every night or something where it's yep. in moderation, actually savor it and enjoy it, right? Yeah, I put all my, yeah, I love that because I put all my baked goods, they go in the freezer. As soon as they're done being made, they're into the freezer. So you're not even tempted to, to snack on them until the main event. So I don't want to run out of time. So I want to make sure, I just want to recap our top three healthy habits throughout the holidays. And then I want to reveal our unhealthiest food and our healthiest food to eat for the holiday. So here we go. Tip number one, celebrate <laughs> the holiday and not the holla month. Tip number two, maintain your weight through the holidays. Weigh yourself today, and then weigh yourself January 1st. Make sure it's about the same weight, okay? Tip number three, everything in moderation, right? We don't need to cut everything out. It's more about moderation, right? We can still enjoy the holidays. So now to Amber, why don't you reveal to us, should we start with the unhealthiest or the healthiest food around the holidays? Let's do the unhealthiest. We'll end on a positive note. Okay, go for it. Pecan pie, loaded ah. with sugar. Stephanie, do you have the nutrition facts? You said you looked it up. Quite sad, yes. So pecan pie is delicious and it is 503 calories for an eighth of a pie. I mean, a oh nine God. inch pie, it's an eighth. I mean, you talk about a sliver. Not a lot of people do, people do a sliver. An eighth of a pie is 500 calories. 64 carbs and 30 grams of added sugar just Whoa. in an eighth of pie and gosh darn it that is why it's so good yep it's not fair so a healthier dessert is pumpkin I, pumpkin mm -hmm. pie which who doesn't love pumpkin pie right pumpkin pie is for an eighth of pie it's 238 calories 31 carbs and only 15 grams of added sugar so there you go way better woohoo no right? Way better. How yeah. about as far as the healthiest food? So it's the holiday tradition at Thanksgiving. It's th or it's turkey. Um, and actually an interesting thing about turkey, people commonly mistakenly think that turkey makes you tired because of the tryptophan it has, but it gets deactivated and turned into dopamine in our body. So it actually makes us alert. The coma that we all have, that sleepiness, it's from overeating carbs. It's not the turkey. So load up on the turkey. It's going to give you protein. It's very lean. The healthiest thing you can eat at Thanksgiving besides, you know, non starchy idea. vegetables. Yeah. Sometimes you hear that though, where people think they're tired because of the turkey. That's yeah, not it. isn't that cool? It's the carbs. That's just sad now. It's just yeah, sad. I know. It's it very, is very true. Um, so again, just to kind of reiterate with our three tips. Tip number one: celebrate the holiday, not the hollow the hollow week or the hollow month. Tip number two: maintain your weight throughout the holidays. Tip number three: everything in moderation. And then the healthiest food to eat that we should be eating more of is turkey and limit your portions of pecan pie, try to go, or maybe a pumpkin pie, right? There was a question earlier on how long should we be doing physical activity and is it every day? I, I would just real quick before we sign off, I would recommend a goal of every day. And even if you start at just 10 minutes, fantastic. The goal is 30 minutes a day. That's what we try to work up to. So any other lasting tips before this is over from anybody? Recap? No? 
I know, again, something to remember, drink plenty of water, 80 ounces a day. Remember the first two bites make you the most alert. They make your brain happy.